welcome to Segul de Latvia, not far from Riga, for World Cup Men's Skeleton on Speed Channel. It's the fourth World Cup of the year. Hi, everybody. I'm John Morgan, joined by David Kurtz. And this track is an exciting, challenging track for the athletes. Let me just show you the second heat competition. Here's our favorites. Favorites, of course, Kristen Bromley, World Cup points leader, Duff Gibson from Canada, learning from the new techniques from the Canadians, Chris Soule, the veteran from America, and these three are going to be hot to get some new, new good results here in Segola, Latvia. And, you know, Kristen Bromley, the World Cup leader, has got a couple victories right off the bat. Calgary and Lake Placid did a great result at Lillehammer, and this British guy has really been doing his own thing. You know, the Canadians and Americans have been dominating this sport so far but here's one of the canadians we'll talk about duff gibson from calgary really knows how to slide well and he just knows how to find his way up at the podium which is why he's in second place in world cup points american chris soul trumple connecticut world cup champion last year doesn't get the great starts but this guy probably knows how to bring the sled down better than anybody else We've got a great race coming up for you here from this Segulda track. Good crowd on hand. Let's take a look at our World Cup standings, dominated by English-speaking people. You don't find that in the sliding sports too often. Christian Bromley in first, Duff Gibson of Canada in second, Chris Soul of Trumbull, Connecticut's in third. Right there, Brady Canfield, he's in sixth place. American Jim Shea, the gold medalist from Salt Lake, he's in seventh. And another American, Kevin Ellis, is in tenth. We'll see all these guys in the today's race. This is a challenging track. Short 1200 meter track, David. It is a short track. It's the shortest track on tour. It's designed principally for luge, but you're gonna take a look on what it's like to go down head first on the skeleton sled. The first 50 meter sprint on the sled. Look at the grooves. That's where you gotta keep in those grooves. Now those grooves are gone. So now you gotta start to steer. Yep and your shoulders are down over the front of the sled, glued to the front if you can. Your feet are off the ice. You use them as a rudder. Going into that second curve, third, this is the labyrinth at the top. You can lose a lot of time here. You're trying to keep the straight line through the curves, no looping. Not a lot of straightaways in this track. How do you steer these things? Well, you uh, shift your weight and you find the balance point on the sled. Now you're gonna see some of the high G curves right here coming up. Yeah, look at the helmet. When you see those helmets going down, that's the G forces forcing your chin down to a couple inches off the ice around 70 miles an hour. You're coming out of curve 14 now. This is the long straightaway into the big 15 curve. You're gonna see this guy put his head down on the ice involuntarily there at that point. The compression point took him down. You go into the final Kreisel curve, the full 360 leading you to the finish ramp. And on this track, if you're still in one piece, you're mighty grateful when you see that finish line. This is a man versus the mountain competition. Then you get off your sled at the bottom and say, oh, by the way, what was my time? Coming up, it's the USA skeletal team against the world. Canfield, Shea, Soul, and Ellis on speed. Property owners, if weeds and brush are taking over your land, at last there is a solution. The amazing DR Field and Brush Mower can reclaim overgrown parts of your property with less work than you ever dreamed possible. Now, if you've ever tried to clear an overgrown field or ditch with a handheld brush cutter, you know they're exhausting to use. Take hold of a DR Field and Brush Mower, though, and you've got a whole different story. The DR knocks over brush and saplings up to two and a half inches thick and chops most everything it cuts. So why let weeds and brush take over? Try out a DR field and brush mower on your own property risk-free. Call 1-800-362-3838 for your free DR catalog and video. There's no obligation, so call now to receive big seasonal savings. That's 1-800-362-3838. Online at drfieldbrush.com. DR is professional power for homeowners. 
I'm a control freak, and I wouldn't want to do anything like smoking where I may not be in control of myself. It's an addictive habit. If you want to be rebellious and you want to do something different, something different from what all the other kids do, just find something you have a passion in, like sports, and push yourself as far as you can. Bobsledding is fast. It's exhilarating. You're going 85 miles an hour, pulling up to a 4 or 5G. I couldn't be an elite athlete if I smoked. Don't start smoking. Weather conditions today, a little rain, it's pretty warm. Yes, uh, a warm front moved in off the Baltic Sea, a lot of humidity, a lot of fog, and you got warm ice. Yeah, they're going a couple seconds slower than they were in practice. Let's take a look at our first team highlights. Casio Mero Koshi from Nagano, the veteran slider on the Japanese team. He knows how to slide fast. He's currently in third place. They got a little bang there earlier in the week. A lot of black eyes in this track. Chris Soule from the United States. He found a way down, but look how challenging this track is. These guys are flying out of control, but if you're out of control, sometimes that's the fast line. Real surprise, Brady Canfield, the 40-year-old from Park City, Utah. He's the leader. It's tight. A couple hundred separating the top three or four sleds. What a race this is shaping up to be. Take a look at the results. Check this out. Chris Soul behind teammate Brady Canfield by 10. Top five guys separated by 1,300s. Top six guys by 1,500s of a second. One of the closest races I've ever seen in this sport of skeleton. Check it out, all the way to 20th place. 21st place is Jim Shea in the United States. He won the Olympic gold medal in Salt Lake in the first ever skeleton competition. His grandfather gave the Olympic oath at the 32 World Olympic Games in Lake Placid. He gave the Olympic oath at the 2002 Olympic Games in Salt Lake City. Jim took last year off because of an injury and hasn't really put it together yet this year. We had a chance to talk to him about how he's going to adjust. Well, uh, I'm not happy with my results. I. Um... I uh, really haven't trained as much as I needed to and put enough time into it, and it's really showing. So I need to uh, work harder and uh, to uh, come back next year with a uh, bigger attitude and uh, go into the World Championships. I go to Altenburg next. I love Altenburg. Uh, then we go to Koenigse. So uh, I'm happy to be here sliding, but not happy with my results. inside this sunday on speed first at three it's an assault on ducati in round one of fim world superbike from valencia spain and at five cordovas strippers and sea crabs the sickest tricks known to man are the tricks of the trade freestyle snow cross from minneapolis then later at seven catch the latest racing news and highlights on speed news nascar edition and speed news sunday that's all this sunday only on speed dish on demand invites to enjoy the 2004 uefa cup spain via real faces off against galatasaray of turkey and you can see all the action live on dish on demand via real hosting galatasaray in second leg play of the third round of the prestigious 2004 uefa cup March 3rd, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Available only via pay-per-view on Dish On Demand. This made simple videos are reshaping bodies and changing lives. Unlike all the quick fix pills, potions, and gadgets that reduce our wallets more than our waistlines, 
Fitness Made Simple is real, and it delivers real results. It really works. I start and end my day with Fitness Made Simple. It works for me. That was me 70 pounds ago. This is me now. Fitness Made Simple works. It worked for me. It's working for thousands of men and women nationwide, and it can work for you, too. Order today and get two videos for the price of one. Walter Stern from Austria, looking down the track, trying to get his focus together. 32-year-old from Zuri, Austria, he's former been a, world champion. Yeah, he's been around. He has been around. He really came back onto the circuit last year. I think he saw the excitement in the Olympics in 2002, trying to recapture some of that magic. This track is tough to do that, though. Five flat start time in the first heat. There's the Russian. We didn't see him. He's the first man down. He's the leader. Stern. Now, you hear that scratching. Is that that rudder thing you talk about where they're dragging their feet? Well, it's the noise you hear is sometimes the toes dragging, but sometimes it's actually the chin guard in front. You see the head draped over the front of the sled. When you get into some of these high compression curves, that head gets slammed down. Well, he's really high there. And Big high half again. second lead. Getting back into his profile, looking good here. Nice speed, 103 kilometers. This is the corner, been eating everybody up on that outlet. We saw a woman's, woman's skeleton. People have all sorts of problems with the exit of 15. Stern, though, nice feet together. And the Russian waves goodbye. He knows he's had enough. Walter Stern from Austria takes over the lead. Looked like a pretty smooth run. Not a lot of violence like we've seen most of the sleds in the first heat. Next up, another Austrian. Marcus Penz, one of the young hopefuls for Team Austria. Austria and Switzerland used to dominate skeleton up until the mid-80s. There was no one on the podium but the Austrians and the Swiss. They're trying to make a comeback and try to penetrate what has now become a North American sport. Well, you notice that one-arm start technique. That's what the Canadians brought to the sport last year, and you see a lot of people doing it. The Canadians developed that actually in the Olympic year in 2002 when they constructed the new ice house in Calgary, but they didn't quite have it perfected to get it going in the 2002 games in Park City. But they've got it gone, and others are modeling themselves after it. Oh! That's what this track can do. Again, you'll see Jim Shea's name up there. That was uh, one of the earlier sleds. We won't see his uh, second heat run. We saw him in the first heat. And here comes Stern, 2,600s, three kilometers down, and he's Stern's the leader. Pence has just got his hands full here. It is a little too much for him to handle. Instead of the subtle body movements, you're seeing a lot of foot action here today, banging off the walls. And one Austrian down, one Austrian still in the winner's box. But again, this is a man versus the mountain track. Look at Pence. That is not easy at 70 plus miles an hour being out of control like he was. Look at this. He goes down, David. No choice. Has to go back up. When you go down too early, it'll drive you up late on the exit. It hit, slammed down on the wall. Then he hit going in there. Look at the ice spray dragging his feet. That's why he only had 100 kilometers of speed down there, which is about 62 miles an hour. Multiply that by six. That's the way you get miles per hour. So six tenths of that 103 kilometers. It's about 62, 63 miles an hour. And boy, that was some violent exit. That's why the Austrian coach was very reluctant to bring his team here. The track in Eagles, Austria is a much milder, more technical track. Yeah, this they... one you have to gear up for and protect yourself and do a lot of heavy steering. Dirk Maschentz from Netherlands. He's really a German. He's got Dutch citizenship. Good starter last year, but this year has no type of start. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by his starts this year. He was, uh, when he left the German program and decided to slide for Team Holland, uh, he just, everyone thought he was going to start to become one of the true principal sliders on tour, but he's been struggling, and even with the starts. Yeah, and he had bad technique up top. We saw some spray in one of those straightaways being he touched. He's got a pretty good lead at the bottom, and he... sometimes too much steering means you don't go fast. 
Well, you'll see it in the straightaway for sure. When the runners start to go a little sidewards, if there's oversteering, you're just, they call shaving ice. It slows you down. Shaving ice is friction. Friction's loss of time. And Walter Stern looks on, hoping to move up a couple more places. He does. So, question is, did this Dutch slider have a bad eat, or did Walter Stern have a great eat? We'll find out more on speed after this. Um, now, yeah. not now, no, 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 no. Come, come on, baby, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Clear. Want your car to live longer? Clear. Pour in grease lightning additives. They help improve your car's performance while reducing wear and emissions. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Grease Lightning. Works better, costs less. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? Now, through Matrix Direct, a 35-year-old man in good health could get $100,000 of coverage for less than $13 a month. Matrix Direct now offers more policies from more carriers than ever before. A 40-year-old man in good health could get $100,000 in coverage for less than $14 a month. Call for a fast free quote over the phone. Call Matrix Direct at 1-800-390-3016. Smoking is not a normal, natural function. Putting a, you know, a fire in your face and breathing the smoke in is, is something we would normally try to avoid. you got to ask yourself why current smokers tell non-smokers not to start. There's a reason for it. They get hooked. They can't stop. They don't like it. They want to quit. They spend the rest of their lives trying to quit. Tobacco companies want to make smoking look cool, but it's not cool. What is cool is bringing the best out in yourself rising to, to your potential and, and accomplishing something real. The walk is sexy and intoxicating. Auto Rodica. Wednesday night at 8 on speed. Welcome back to Segolda Latvia for Speed Channel's coverage of World Cup Skeleton. Our next competitor from Calgary, one of the flying Canadians, Paul Bohm. We're going to see three other Canadians here. And the Canadians, they've got a strong program. They do. It's interesting. The Canadians have developed that one-handed push. Paul goes back to the old archaic two-handed push, high kick, leg kick to the rear, and then the momentum goes forward. But he has a four. What a start. This guy is still keeping this program together without the new push. Yeah, 485. Anytime you see somebody get down to the 480s, that's better than average. If you get up there in the 90s or above five seconds, not competitive to be successful. But of course, beyond the start, you got to come down this track, and this is a challenge. From curve six on, it starts to really kick in, and you've got to be ready. His lead has drifted it's down to 11 hundredths. He's got to be clean, down to two. He's going to need 103 kilometers, and the Big 15 doesn't have it. When you see that lack of speed, i got to believe Stern's going to be the leader. He knows it. He's laughing. Clipping the straightaway into the Kreisel curve is also going to cost him. Yeah, he lost. Look at this. 65 hundredths in the last 200 meters. Canadian coach disgusted. Paul Bohm, another victim to this Segolda track. Fell five places. And this is a good skeleton athlete. An excellent athlete, and I think you'll see some major position shifts here. This is not an easy technical track. Exit at nine, not bad, pretty smooth. Sometimes the violent exits there are the fastest, but the speed, he had a big lead. He had 30 hundreds lead at the top, lost it all because of the speed. Look at that, two kilometers down which is about almost a mile per hour. And a mile per hour on a short 1,200 meter track is a lot. And if you're wondering how these athletes start running on ice, Philippe Cabaret using the one-handed push with the, with the track spikes getting traction, opening up as a sprinter, and a nice quick load onto the sled. Last year, the only people you saw, oh, he bumped there. A lot of pressure in that first corner. Maybe he ran too far, David, which is a tendency sometimes. It does. He didn't get settled on the sled quickly enough, and actually the start group spits a little bit to the left, and Philippe got caught. 
He's 2,700s down now. That's not a good sign. 73-6. Anybody up there high 73 or near 74 has a chance. Cavaray has to be perfect down here. Looked pretty good out of 9 into 10. Decent speed. Jimmy Shea still has the best speed. Perfect form. Down wow. the straightaway into 15. Down to 2,200s, 104 kilometers. That's the best speed. How much track does he have left? A couple brushes. This could be close. Even with that start mishap, he's still got a chance. Nope. Lost more time. Walter Stern. I don't know if Walter Stern beat him or Philip Cavaray beat himself with that mistake of the first well, uh, 100 Fili meters. Yeah, sure. Uh, Philippe cost him. You lose your momentum that early in the ride, it's going to cost you all the way down the track. Okay, we're looking now in the finish. He had good speed. Nice form there, David. Look at the feet together. But he drifts a little bit, gets over here, taps. How much does that cost him? Well, that's going to drag, and it clearly costs you several tenths because he, now he has to drag a foot to stay off the wall. And that's an uphill section, so that makes it worse. Yeah, out of the big 15 curve, the track actually goes uphill before it dips down. Now you're looking at Florian Grassel, the young German. The Germans are trying to rebuild their program around this young guy and his compatriot, Franz Kleber. Well, they used to have people like Willie Schneider hanging around. Willie Schneider was sliding for about 20 years, made it to the Olympics, so he's about 44 years old in uh, Salt Lake, former world champion way back in the 80s. This sport, these, some of these athletes hung around for a couple of decades and got that reward at the 2002 Games. 474 start. Gosh. Wow. Wow. 474 start. That is on some tracks like Innsbruck and Calgary and Salt Lake. Winterberg starts like that it's impossible to lose down below but this track here it's been eating some people alive we'll see if Grassel can hold it well they've been coached by Jens Mueller the great world champion loser 54 hundredths of a second gonna be hard for him to spit that up he should be the leader here easy at the bottom down to 45 Here's where that tracks, and no speed, 104 kilometers. Oh. That's the, and he spit there again. Ping-ponging down the straightaway uphill is going to cost you. Boy, he had a 5400s lead. Look, oh. another guy's gone. Stern can't believe it. And there's Jens Mueller, the coach, can't believe with that start time that his athlete's not the leader at the bottom. Well, the men are having a challenge on this track. Check out what the women did. We've seen this already on speed. Noelle Pike is pace. Look at this ride down the Segolda track. She made it to the bottom. Tristan Gale of the United States, she didn't do so well either, 12th. But look at Mirren over to Russia. Look at that crash. Almost total disaster. And she's happy at the bottom. Hey, Lindsay Elcock, the Canadian, who leads the World Cup circuit, she finished fourth. The Germans, though, one, two, three on this day. Kirsten Jurgens was the winner. It was her first World Cup medal ever. And it, she takes home the gold. Steffi Jacobs, she used to be Steffi Heinz. Look, she won the World Championships back in 2000. Germans, one, two, three. Leanne Parsley of the United States, the best American finish. Katie Kaczynski in ninth. All of these girls, the Canadians, had problems with the track. Tristan Gale, she's in 12th. And boy, this shook up the World Cup standings. More skeleton on speed after. more affordable during the Subaru all-wheel drive away. Subaru, driven by what's inside. Who cares what's in a hot dog? 
when diverse cast-aside elements come together to form something great, well, that's the American way. No, sir. Far better to ask yourself, what are you made of? What spice do you add to the national knockwurst? What flavor do you contribute to the high life? Speed Tuesday original series. They take a lucky viewer's ride. I'll trust you guys. Let's always have some fun with. Create an owner profile. The kid looks like he's gonna have a coronary if we go ballistic on this car. And perform the ultimate tuner transformation before your eyes. I'm not gonna get it back. Too bad, I hope. That's yeah. the monster truck, the mother bag. You want General Lee painted on the thing? Tuner transformation. Tuesday night at 7 Eastern on Speed. Now, Martin Reddle, 30-year-old flight instructor from Innsbruck, Austria, also considered one of the wild men on the tour. I think by looking at his hair coiffure, you can see he's a, quite a guy. A real gentleman, though, too. Bronze medalist, or silver medalist at the 2002 Winter Olympic Games in Skeleton, world champion in 2001. Free spirit is an understatement about this guy. And boy, is he a popular person at the top of that track. Oh, he's a great guy, and uh, he is an excellent slider, too. Silver medal in the Olympics, one of the few medals the Austrians picked up outside of uh, skiing. Well, speed, 73 eighths, good sign. He's got a huge amount of time over his teammate at the bottom, Walter Stern. But Gonna have to be clean down here. Yeah, we see 4600s. Most tracks, you got a 4600s lead. You can walk in the park home. Here, people have been losing a lot of time at the bottom. 4500s now. Look at great down the straightaway big into speed. big 15. Up hill section. I think Stern shakes his head, realizing his day in the winner's box might be over. And it is. Good bottom of the track. And the Austrian coach looks on. He's, he can't complain. He's got an Austrian in the box no matter what happens. Yeah, it's a good comeback for Martin, who was disqualified last in Lillehammer for being overweight. Hard to believe he'd be overweight this point. It's the maximum weight. We talk about that. And the weight was in the sled. Well, you only get caught cheating when they weigh you. Unfortunately for him, they weighed him up there. Look at this line, though. Now, some people, the bobsledders wear clear shields. These guys wear these Darth Vader shields. What's the difference? Well, I think the difference is that most of them are polarized shields to keep the glare off the ice. When your eyes are just two inches off the ice, you need all the protection you can from glare and shine. And here it comes. And now we're looking at someone that is a real hero here in Latvia, Thomas Dukors. His father's the manager of the track, the only Latvian slider in the field. This being the first race, 493. Good push for Thomas. Young he, kid. He was in the final seating in the first heat. Look at the comparison between the one-arm start and Thomas Dukars on the traditional, learning here in Latvia. His father's the race director, and uh, runs the track. Done a great job here this week. Super job. Hey, unreasonable weather rain this fog it's been with us for a couple days these guys are going still a couple seconds slower than they normally go and it's a dead heat right now two cars and rental this will be the test this oh he's got 1200 that must have been that exit up in the 9 10 best speeds we've seen so far perfect through 15 and up the straightaway into the chrysal curve wow this kid's gonna beat a former world champion and olympic silver medalist this would be a big day for him Five, 54 93. Look at the latvian crowd look at his father up there very proud of his son so 10 more sleds yet to go but this latvian he's our leader he holds the hopes of this country Latvians are successful in bobsled, men's bobsled, but not in skeleton. This could be the start. Next up, top of the track. It's uh, American Kevin Ellis, who set the start record in the first heat. We talked to him about it. I'm hoping to push a little faster. Uh, there are a couple of things I noticed on my first push that um, I wasn't exactly happy with, but um, toward the mid portion of my push, I felt really good, so I'm hoping to, to fix that first three or four steps and uh, really get off the block and go for a little faster time. Kevin's a decathlete from Dallas, Texas. Look at his leg turnover, drive, 
Good foot speed, good leg drive, Great good athlete. quick load. Just a matter of time. Look at that, 477. Just three hundreds off his start record set in the first heat. Anybody in the 70s, what an advantage. Now, Kevin still cutting his eye teeth on learning how to drive these things. You know, yeah. like Bob Slotting, it's not the guy who drives the most that wins, it's the guy who drives the least, but it's tough not to steer on this track. It's puzzling, it really. You want to, you feel that you have to oversteer. Sometimes that creates more oh, problems. Mistake there. Yeah, tap the wall going into the curve. He's not accelerating when you do that. Gonna need to be perfect here. Oh, 30 hundreds down to eight. Not a good sign for American Kevin Ellis. Only has 102 kilometers of speed. 104 the Latvian had. He's handling the track pretty well, though, but he is losing no speed. speed. Yeah, no speed. That killed him. Look at that. Lost a half second. That two kilometers difference in that curve 15. That just cost him a lot. But this guy, it's just a matter of time before he figures it out. When you got that type of start time at the top, you're going to eventually be our leader one of these times. You'll be hearing more about Kevin Ellis from Dallas. More on speed after the break. Accepting the trophy for Car and Driver's 2004 Best Luxury SUV, the Cadillac SRX Performance Utility. Car and Driver's 2004 Best Luxury SUV. Cadillac. Breakthrough. This Sunday on Speed, first at three, it's an assault on Ducati in round one of FIM World Superbike from Valencia, Spain. And at five, Cordovas, strippers, and seat grabs. The sickest tricks known to man are the tricks of the trade. Freestyle snowcross from Minneapolis. Then later at seven, catch the latest racing news and highlights on Speed News NASCAR Edition and Speed News Sunday. That's all this Sunday, only on Speed. Where's the jersey? There's the jersey. Okay, let's see what we got today. 30 seconds left in auction. You've been outbid. I've been outbid. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I'm switching to Earthlink. Speed up your internet with new Earthlink Accelerator. Call 1-800-217-0702 and get six months of dial-up service featuring Earthlink Accelerator at half price. Web pages load up to five times faster than regular dial-up. You don't need new hardware, and you get tools to block almost all pop-ups and spam. Get six months of dial-up service featuring Earthlink Accelerator at half price. Call, go online, or visit these retailers. Move to Earthlink. It revolves around you. Welcome back to Segolda. Next up, another Canadian. Duff Gibson, another 37-year-old athlete from Calgary. He uses the newly developed one-hand push. Watch it, just like a sprinter, just hanging onto the sled, guiding it along in the cut grooves on the ice. Track spikes, and the way you can run. You can hear that chatter on the ice. Drifting over a little bit to the left, but just sweeps by. Now he's got a 1400s lead. Uh, two cars, the Latvian at the bottom, who's moved up a couple places. This is probably his best finish ever, no matter what happens right now. Minus three. That means he's gone from minus 14 to minus three. 70, low 73 speed. It's about 47 miles an hour up at curve five. He's going to have to be perfect down here, David. He is going to have to be perfect. I think uh, Plus you're, four. look at that. He's lost it. He's still got a chance if he gets up there 104 kilometers at the bottom. There's that foot comes out. He's got it back down to two. He's got 104 kilometers. Still needs to be perfect. This could be close. Two cars at the best speed, 104.7. Look at this, plus 13. Oh. Boy, this guy's second World Cup points. Two cars just reeled him in. So home track advantage here. That Latvian has moved up three spots and picked off one of the best in the planet, Duff Gibson of Calgary. Duff bangs the sled. Very disappointed, but you're looking at a Latvian who trains on this track daily with his father as the race director. 
foot comes out here. There's that toe drag you talked about. How much that cost him? Well, that cost him a little bit, but he's thinking he's got to set up for the big 15 curve. And when you saw him go through 15, but it cost him on the speed. Yeah, about 63 miles an hour. Again, take that 104, multiply it six tenths of that. And that's how you get miles per hour. Next up, the World Cup leader in the yellow jersey, Christian Bromley. This guy had a fantastic run in the first heat, but for he popped out of the grooves with this new one-handed start, banged off the wall, and it cost him. Yeah, three guys tied here. Bromley, Kevin Ellis, and the Canadian just came down the track. Yeah, Duff Gibson. Duff Gibson, all three of them oh. are tied. That's a bang. That was a drag on the wall. That really cost you. That's very unusual. This is a veteran slider, and he has put together consistent runs all through the World Cup Tour. That doesn't look good there, though. 73-5. You know, two cars at high 73 at this point. Next clock, if that's plus. He's waving a little bit. He Ooh, cuts, cuts the there, wall. too. Minus seven. Hey, went from minus five to minus seven. That's a good sign. What's he do here? Well, that's perfect. But Look it's plus you. four. That's the, uh, he's got feet dragging on both sides. Doesn't have 104 kilometers. This is the World Cup leader. And looks like Dukar is going to reel him in. Trying to lean forward. Get it. No. Oh. <laughs> Another top slider in the world gone this is pretty shocking <laughs> this is shocking this is a story thomas dukar is staying on the leaderboard through some of the best sliders in the world well again this track this is not winterberg calgary salt lake even lilyhammer where it's just about gliding and driving here he looked good to the end of the feet come out both sides. Well, he had to make this adjustment here. Otherwise, he was going to get into the big 15 curve too late. And that kilometer. Man. He went through the curve smoothly, but it, he lost the speed. And then Dukar sits in the winner's box. That's a great place to live in that leader's box in the sport of skeleton. You normally don't sit there too long. He's but, uh, five places he's moved up now. Here uh, comes a yeah. upcoming star. Yeah, one of the young Russians. Constantine. Matter of time before this guy breaks in through. This he's in the top six, top five here now. Sled built by Pascal Richard, one of the Royal Mounties in Canada. He's sixth place into the first heat. Alada Shvili is one of the young hopefuls for Russia. 491 push, looking good. The standings to date, pretty shocking so far that this Latvian could finish no worse than seventh. Well, the Russians train here too, so I'm sure the coaches and the fans from Russia are hoping that Alada Shvili is going to pick up and take knock Thomas Dukor is off the leaderboard. Oh, oh that way was a high. bad transition. Wrong side of that corner. He went in and really had to steer it off. When you steer, you slow down. Minus four to plus seven. Only chance he's got to have 104 speed. Doesn't have it. Do the math. Clean this guy's going to be way off the pace with yeah. that type of speed. Clean out of 15, but has lost his speed. And this Latvian sits there. You talk about leader in the clubhouse. This is it for that Latvian. Half a second, 42 hundreds. That tells you how important it is to be perfect for the bottom. Yeah, it's not exactly watching someone miss a putt, but uh, missing the walls is the way to get down this track, and we'll see if the others can catch Thomas Ducors. Well, I can only ponder the mistake, and here it is. Off this exit, watch him get over on the right side of the wall as we're looking at the picture. Now he's got to steer. Look, he goes in the middle of the next corner. He's got to climb. That is the mistake. He has to do a lot of steering to get off there. His head comes up. No speed. Hey, Our leader is a Latvian named Dukars. Top sledge coming up. just got a lot more affordable during the Subaru all-wheel drive away. Subaru, driven by what's inside. Passion. Power. Excitement.
excitement. Motorcycles, they make your pulse race. Get paid for doing what you love by training for a new career as a motorcycle technician at one of the top training institutes in the nation. Motorcycle Mechanics Institute in Phoenix, Arizona or Orlando, Florida. Get hands-on training, working with current technology on the latest bikes. Harley-Davidson, Honda, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha. All MMI programs are endorsed and equipped by the major motorcycle manufacturers. MMI graduates have created successful careers as service technicians, race team technicians, service managers, and a range of positions with industry manufacturers. Get the power of education and get your career started with MMI. Call us anytime, any day to learn how you can turn your passion into a new career. I'm a control freak, and I wouldn't want to do anything like smoking where I may not be in control of myself. It's an addictive habit. If you want to be rebellious and you want to do something different, something different from what all the other kids do, just find something you have a passion in, like sports, and push yourself as far as you can. Bob sledding is fast. It's exhilarating. You're going 85 miles an hour, pulling up to a 4 or 5G. I couldn't be an elite athlete if I smoked. Don't start smoking. For the first time ever in the history of the sport, all five disciplines of the Federation International Bobsleigh and Toboggan, two-man bob, four-man bob, woman's bob, men's and woman's skeleton, will all be held at the same venue in Koenigsegg, Germany. All five events will be on speed. Welcome back to Speed Channel's coverage of World Cup Skeleton Top 5 Sleds. Racing on the edge for the medals here. Ron Kleber, the young protege of Willy Schneider, and Jans Mueller's put a lot of faith in this young man. Notice that the Germans are using the Davenport sled. Ryan Davenport, former U.S. coach from Calgary, Canada. 488 push. There's the comparison. You can see Kleber ran a lot farther than Ducars. Well, the Germans, like the Canadians, use luge experience to learn this track, learn the ice conditions. He still has a lead. 73-4, that's not it. 73-7, 73-8 is what Dukars, the Latvian, had. And look out. He's got 22 hundreds. But we've seen leads of 40, 50 hundreds evaporate down here in the bottom. The down to nine. Ooh. Germans have developed special runners that are supposed to carry the speed through the end of this track, just like Luge. Yeah, 103 kilometers, the magic number's 104.5 or better. This is gonna be close. Oh, 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 oh. Of the second length of your fingernail, Jens Muller, the German coach, looks on with. Can't just believe can't it Can't believe himself. it. And this Latvian has moved up six places. He could do no worse than fifth. This is the European Championships, too, which is a bigger emphasis on all of these athletes. Look at this. Fran Kleber, head up a little too high, shoulders are down, trying to check out that dangerous 15 curve. And look at that expression on the German coach. I can't believe it. Kleber's still happy with his run. He's in second. Now, next up, another Canadian athlete. The tallest guy in the competition, six foot four, Jeff Payne. Jeff uh, is actually coming off an injury. Missed the first half of the World Cup season. Came back for the first one of the second part of the season in Lillehammer. One-handed start, but he doesn't. He doesn't it cross the weight. Some guys do it on the near handle. He does it on the opposite handle. Not a very good start. He usually has better starts than that. Well, uh, he's such a big man, he actually is on the left-hand side of the sled and can lean over with the upper body, but... Oh, there's a brush! And every brush up top prevents you from accelerating, taking advantage of Mother Nature, but 74.4, that's good speed. That is good speed, and because of his height and weight, he really does translate a lot of that. Oh. Ooh, dragging the foot. 3,800. 13 has caused him a problem. He got banged up pretty seriously this week. Black guy, and he's got 2,500. Ooh, you could even see the black no guy. No speed. Look at that. Look at 104 that. kilometers. Rough transition. Going uphill. We've seen these big speeds evaporate. Two cars looks on. He's astonished. Uh, Another person. 
This is impossible. I've never seen it. I've never seen somebody move up seven spots in a leader's box, ever. Pain shot. No speed on the bottom part of the track. 3,800's up there. Look at the black guy. <laughs> pointing, out, pointing out the shiner, waving to everyone, but... Uh, hey, a lot of these guys are just happy to finish the race and walk away. Put some gold in the rearview mirror. This track's been eating them all alive. Th this is a track where you can't keep your helmet off the ice. It Look at that. You saw it right there. Look at the feet come out. That rough transition off a of nine. Through area, no speed, though. Look at that. Two plus kilometers down. And two cars just, he's beating these world champions, world cup champions, Olympic medalists. Next up though, one of the crowd favorites from Nagano, casual hero, Koshi. Hasn't won a medal yet this year. Almost a world cup champion in 2001 season, missed by one point. Kazuhiro was going to retire last year after the World Championships in Nagano on his home track. I think he was disappointed in his fourth place finish, so he's coming back for more. Well, look at the rear front angle. Look at the way you jump on. The old two-handed start. Traditional style. 1900s at that clock. 74 kilometers is going to be part, and he's got it. Can anybody beat Dukars at the bottom? That's what we're starting to talk about now. That kid's moved up seven spots. I think Kazuhiro has him in his sights, though. 21 on it. He's increased. Looking smooth. Yeah, second best speed behind Payne. We saw what happened to Payne on the bottom. It was, can I say, painful. And Koshi just threw it all back. Minus 11. Not 104 kilometers. That's the magic number. I can't believe this. This well, is for a medal. A lot of them are slowing down to take 15. It may have cost him. Ah, Dukars has won the first Latvian World Cup medal in the sports history. This is unbelievable. Another former, you know, World Cup medalist, gold medalist. I mean, this guy has just eaten the field alive here in the second round. Another Checking out guy. his time. Can't believe it himself. What? Where did I lose it? You heard someone say Dukars is still ahead of him. Dukars never finished the top 10 before in his life. Now he's got a bronze medal. The Japanese Koshi's to third. First medal ever for the Latvian program. Only two sleds left. They're both from the United States. Chris Soule and his teammate Brady Canfield. On... Attention welders. A recent medical journal study noted a possible link between exposure to welding fumes and Parkinsonism. If you or a loved one were exposed to welding fumes and have tremors, trouble walking, loss of balance, slurred speech, stiff or weak muscles, or have been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, call the law offices of James Sokolov at 1-800-211-0641. That's 1-800-211-0641. There's only four people who know we took that money. Stick to the plan. This is my job. Not yet. I will not let you do this to me. You and me are gonna play some running guy. You're out of your damn mind. Run. The Shield, season premiere, Tuesday, March 9th at 10, only on FX. Imagine coming home every night to a symphony of jets all playing their part to make you feel better than ever. Sound good? Then call now and we'll send you a free brochure on the world's number one hot tub, Hot Spring Spas. They give you what others don't, like a no-fault heater and a no-bypass filtration system, so it's always hot, always clean, always ready when you are. With a Hot Spring Spa, you get unparalleled technology, the support of a professional dealer, and a place where everyday stress just disappears. Drift away to a symphony played by the world's most unique variety of jets. Feel our patented moto massage jet sweep up and down your back while others work your neck, shoulders, and feet. So call now or visit our website to get your free brochure and the dealer near you. Hot Spring Spas, built for a lifetime of relaxation. Welcome back to Speed. Two sleds left. It's Chris Soule of the United States. We've talked about how challenging this track is. 
Well, my push was slow in the first heat, so I'm looking forward to dropping the push a little bit, and that's basically the difference between uh, first place and second right now. So hopefully I can bump up the push and, you know, get into the track. Chris needs a big second heat here. He's found this a challenging track, but he's one of the best drivers on tour, and he's going to put this puzzle together on the second heat. He's got a pretty big lead, 1700s lead now on the Latvian at the bottom. Little toe dragon there, just a minor adjustment. He picks up his speed at the bottom of the track. Whoa, Ooh. that's not a good sign there. Clipped the wall going into six. But he's got it up to 12. Now, Soul, not a 74 kilometer speed. Now, he really was all over the track in the first heat and had the second best time. That's the way he this slides. Is oh. off spot. Whoa. Ooh, banged his head. Took it hard. That, that, I think, is going to cost Chris Coming out Everton. Of, He's coming done. out of 14 down wow. the straightaway. He's lost his 100 speed. Kilometers, oh, too high and 50 oh. off again. He's going to drop maybe double-digit places. So Chris Soul was going for it. He the got, soul man, they call him. He got rocked. He's having a little trouble orienting himself. Look at that, a 56-41. Wow, Greg Sands, coach, looks on. Can't believe it. From Chris Soul, he's not even standing up like he normally does. He usually stands up and stops himself. I got to see if he can. Oh, frustration. Looks like he's got his senses. Well, yeah, his what, eyes, his eyes look rock. clear. Oh, Check this out. Look Peter was separated. He came down too early off the curve, which makes him rise again at the end. 70 miles Ooh. an hour, bang! Head bouncing off the sled. What type of athletes are these? Soul can only ponder. One American down, not a good result. We go back to the top. Brady Canfield, we talked to him about this track. Um, I'm going to just try and clean up the mistakes I made in the first heat, uh, try and gain a little bit of speed. I still, this is a new track, and I, I have not got down curve 11. It's just... It's just tricky. I mean, I got, a, got lucky with a light tap out of it this time, but I've got to get better. Brady, age 40. This is unbelievable. On a 1985 sled built by the great sled builder from Austria, Josef Stasny. Look at that. Good foot speed, quick load onto the sled. 501, not a bad start for Brady. 2900s lead, not a good starter. But boy, did he have a great first run, but he was also out of control in that first run. A lot of the Americans slide that way, having some of the these Chris and 74 Brady. 74 kilometers we're going to need. Got 22. They thought they're training at the old Lake Placid track where it was a rock and roll track just like here in Segulda. Well, here comes that spot. They ate up Chris Soul. Watch for Canfield. Pretty rough. Look Ooh. out. Went oh. sideways. Oh. 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 Head off the wall. Not the same exact spot as his teammate, but the next curve down. 2800s down. You could see it in his eyes. We're having trouble 98 focusing. 98 kilometers. No chance. Nope. Dragging this, off the wall. Can't believe it. Two cars is going to win this. This is shocking. I've never seen someone live this long in a winner's box. 11 to 1. Unbelievable. Oh. Listen to the crowd. Shocking. All the other athletes there. You know, the Skellen community is quite a close community, and a lot of them are pulling for this hometown hero. Un just unrealistic. Both Americans didn't come down. They were going for it. Chris on this, Soul, Brady on the, Canfield, they were just going for it. And cost them. On this, Soul. there's Chris. On this, look at Brady trying to collect himself. Can't believe it himself. Well, I'm happy to see he's okay. Duff Gibson checks him out. Look at this. The Russian folded him up. Well, the Russians trained with the Latvians here in Segulda. Here's the replay of uh, what Brady. happened to oh, USA's really? okay. Brady Canfield. Watch this violent collision. Kiss the lip, driving him into the wall, oh. head off the wall, ice spraying. Oh, and there's the moment the Latvians will remember. Not in my house today, said Thomas Dukors. What a skeleton race. Well, this is probably the best race we brought you this year on Speed Channel. Uh, pretty shocked. Never seen anybody falter like that. Two Americans both faltered from first and second all the way to tied for 15. Check out the leaderboard. Top three sleds separated by two hundredths of a second. Wow, five different countries. Best American finish, Kevin Ellis of Dallas in ninth. Chris Soul. And Brady Canfield led the field at the end of the first heat. They both ended up in 15th place. Interviews after this.
The Mantis Tiller Cultivator is making gardening easier for everyone. The Mantis weighs just 20 pounds, so it's easy to carry and operate. Yet the unique patented tines and powerful two-cycle engine lets you cut through hard soils and dig down to 10 inches deep. Mantis is so easy to handle that weeding and cultivating, even in tight places, is a snap. And with the optional Mantis attachments, you can dig furrows, trim hedges, aerate and dethatch your lawn, cut professional-looking borders, and remove weeds from cracks. Mantis's superior performance and rugged dependability is backed by a two-year warranty and a lifetime warranty on the tines against breakage, so you get years of trouble-free service. The Mantis Tiller is now available at factory direct prices, so call for your free information pack with details on our one-year money-back guarantee. For more information, call 1-800-758-4311. That's 1-800-758-4311. Smoking is not a normal, natural function. Putting a, you know, a fire in your face and breathing the smoke in is, is something we would normally try to avoid. You gotta ask yourself why current smokers tell non-smokers not to start. There's a reason for it. They get hooked, they can't stop, they don't like it, they want to quit. They spend the rest of their lives trying to quit. Tobacco companies want to make smoking look cool, but it's not cool. What is cool is bringing the best out in yourself, rising to, to your potential and, and accomplishing something real. Welcome back to Segol de Latvia, where you've just witnessed, I think, one of the best skeleton races I've ever seen. Definitely one of the most shocking. Here's our World Cup standings. Bromley of Great Britain, still the leader. Duff Gibson, both these guys really didn't falter. Kleber wins a medal here today. Moves up. Chris Sol falls a place. He's back to fourth. Koshi moves up a little bit. He's in fifth. Brady Canfield, sixth. Kevin Ellis still in seventh. Jimmy Shea in ninth place. Jimmy, as he said, first part of the program, he's still hanging in there trying to find the best line down the track. But what a race. Let's go down to Dave Kurtz. Down here with two banged up Americans. Uh, you're gonna have to give us your names later. What about this second heat here in Segola? Oh, it's terrible. I, uh, my foot got caught underneath me and I totally flipped the sled. Uh, didn't know what I was gonna be able to do for the rest of the run, but you know, that's racing and uh, I was lucky to come out without any major injuries, but I'm going to feel it tomorrow. How many fingers do you have on your hand? I can't <laughs> count right now, but I'll tell you later on, David. Yeah. Brady, in first place after the first heat, this track really kicked you down the second heat. What went on? Um, I tried to uh, attack 11, and uh, the track is quite a bit slower than it was in the first heat, so I had the timing completely off. When I came out of 11, I overdrove it and not only hit the wall once, but hit it twice. And uh, after that, there was a flat spot. So when I was skidding, that was a time killer. So in first place after the first heat, you decided to attack 11, tough curve. Uh, it kind of got me in the first heat. I wanted to get it smoother and keep trying. I guess I'll have to wait till next year and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can improve on this a little bit. Hey, how did you like the track here in Latvia? Oh, this track is very tough. Please look here. So <laughs> I was two cut uh, here in the corner 15, very tough. But uh, Thomas, it's very strong. I cannot beat uh, him. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank so you. good run. And with Frank Kleber, second place, how, uh, what does this do for the German men's skeleton program? Oh, this is very good. I'm very happy about this result. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for more medals at the World Championship in Koenigsegg? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> and to the real hero of the day, gold medal winner, Thomas Dukors. Thomas, what does this mean for Latvian skeleton? It's first medal and it's incredible. I, I can believe it. And first of all, I want to thanks, uh, say thank you to one person. It's my coach, trainer, mechanic, and father. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Donna Stuker's a great man. Congratulations, Thomas, and congratulations to Latvian Skeleton. Yeah, thanks. What a great comment he made about his father, Dina Stukars. What a great day. You know, I've been doing this for many years. This is one of the best races ever. There's Dina Stukars, the father. He shakes his head. He can't believe what happened here today. Bad day for the United States, even though they hung in there. Hey, for my broadcast partner, David Kurtz, I'm John Morgan. For all the FIBT TV crew, thanks for watching. See you next time on Speed Channel.